Penn State fans, it's been a while since we chatted. I, Johnny McGonigal, I know you. I'm Bob <laughs> Flounders. Now we just need to introduce, we need to introduce, for those of you who are just listening, uh, if you're not watching this, Max Ralph is uh, part of Penn Live's Penn State coverage team. Fresh hello, hello. out of fresh out of school up at Penn State. He's going to be doing a lot of different things, I believe, uh, on the Penn State beat for us. He's going to be up in State College. Max, it's my first chance to really talk to you, uh, but I want I want to get the fans involved. But congratulations, um, no big deal. You're just following Dave Jones. No, there's no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. This is the most uh, interesting man in Penn State football history, I think. But uh, welcome aboard. Uh, good to chat with you. I hope uh, I hope everything's going well for you. Yeah, it's been uh, it's awesome. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for the warm welcome. Obviously. Uh, been around for a little while, like you said, just fresh out of college, went to Penn State, been covering the team for three years already, so this will be year number four, but the first time in a fully professional capacity, and uh, got a great team to do it with here, but you know, you're right, the, the shoes the shoes are big right now to, to be filling, the shoes, the shoes are very big. <laughs> Max Ralph, a product of the best student newspaper in the country, the day right. that been at That's right. State, got to represent that, Max. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, we're full of uh, collegiate alums here, so absolutely. There is a pretty wide swath. I think swath would be the right word. There's a lot yeah. of former collegiate, I think, people that went to Penn State that are still that either were on the beat or still on the beat, and it speaks, oh yeah, it speaks to um, you know the program and kind of the the quality people that they consistently <clears throat> they consistently uh, produce, and I think that's oh, a yeah. real feather. In Penn State's cap, I'm talking to yeah two former collegiate guys. I'm a I I, I was a sports editor guys for the Aquinas uh, at the University of Scranton in the mid 1980s, but I don't know I don't know if that's going to go over too big um, <laughs> on this podcast. But Max, uh, Johnny, and I we just want to before we talk about some Penn State news and put you on the spot on a couple of things because that's oh, yeah. what I do. So so just kind of talk a little bit about, about if you kind of kind of what you see. Maybe what I know, Chris Hopkins and you uh, got to know each other. What what is kind of your plan, or what is what is kind of your vision, or what is Chris's vision for maybe how you're going to augment our coverage at least in 2024? Yeah, the great thing that we've been able to talk about is the fact that we've got three full time reporters now, right? So I mean, obviously Dave was amazing, but he was a columnist only. So you know, we've got a ton of flexibility. I'm probably going to hit a lot of the day to day stuff and. Uh, hopefully uh, I'm here to try and keep you guys available for a lot of stuff. And like you mentioned, Bob, I'm going to be in state college. So a little bit uh, boots on the ground, uh, hopefully uh, more easily accessible than you guys having to commute down there. So I think the idea right now is uh, it's pretty flexible, but we're going to be able to do a lot of stuff. Uh, we're going to be able to do a lot of cool stuff. We're going to have, um, like I said, boots on the ground, and there's a there's a lot of potential here, and it's super exciting. It at the very least is going to save me some miles on my car. You know, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully I can hopefully I can get back out there because I was driving back home from State College. I'm home right now at my parents' house, but uh, I broke down on the way home, so that was uh, not good. <laughs> That's not a good omen. Hopefully, it'll go better for you, you know, Max. Tell tell the listeners and. You know, a lot of people who listen to our podcast are subscribers and well are going to be, you know, you know, reading your stuff, you know, um, in the near future here. Uh, you said you're at home. Where's home for you? Give it give it a little uh, personal background. Yeah, personal background. Uh, I was born in Pittsburgh, PA, but moved away when I was little. So now I'm an Ohioan. Um, I live in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, but you see the Chicago Cubs hat on my head. Uh, I'm a diehard Chicago Cubs fan, families from Northwest Indiana. So I'm kind of a, uh, a tri-citizen, I say, of uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Indiana, though I've never lived in Indiana. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm Midwestern through and through, moving over to State College. So that's the personal background. Played sports in high school, of course, and uh, like I said, just graduated college and been doing this a little while. So super excited to keep it rolling. Nice. Well, actually, it kind of sounds like you're in, in a good way. You're a little bit of a mutt, right? Pittsburgh, Ohio, sure. love in Chicago, State College. That's a nice little sampling of uh, of some pretty fun areas. I think Dayton is one of the better cities in uh, in Ohio. I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure Penn State fans are immediately going to jump to the conclusion that you secretly 
love the Buckeyes because that was a problem with. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think, I think I'm at least a little farther distance than Dave was. Um, but yeah, so that's great. Uh, as a, this is, it's, it's it never, it never really gets slow, Max. It just there's just kind of like brief pauses. Um, as we talk now, you know, there's 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 a trial in Harrisburg. Uh, it's true. Yeah. A former a former Penn State team doctor and uh, and some uh, issues with I think Penn State and James Franklin. That's that's playing out as we talk about that. But also, um, I just think that it's uh, there's going to be some recruiting news that's going to come up. I think that'll be that'll be fun to cover. Pretty soon, the the all of the freshmen will be on campus. It'll be August before we know it. I think, Johnny, we're going to get some uh, kickoff times very, very soon. I don't know about you guys, but everything I've heard, I saw the athletic thing. I think it's a, it's, it's kind of an advantage for Penn State. Uh, it's going to be a noon kickoff to open the season in, in uh, Morgantown. If I'm Penn State, I'm not minding that one bit because those, those wackos at night, I mean, that's a pretty intimidating atmosphere, right, Johnny? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, having been to Morgantown a couple of times in my time when I was covering Pitt, not to cover uh, Pitt football because they, they didn't play down there when I covered them, but you know, basketball. Uh, and, and I can only imagine what that stadium would be like at night. We talked, Bob, about what that tailgating scene would be if it was an 8 p.m. kick. And uh, it, yeah, it does sound like and nothing official yet, but it does sound like it's going to be a noon kick, probably a big noon kickoff on Fox. Um, you know, they're it doesn't seem like they're going to move it from the Saturday slot that the, that it's currently in. I know that there was some speculation or thought that, you know, maybe it gets moved up a day or two and is a night game. But uh, I know that a lot of West Virginia fans have had those hotels and Airbnbs and everything else booked for a while. I mean, this is their biggest home game of the season, uh, you know, when Penn State rolls into town. And so I'm sure that the West Virginia administrators were fighting for it to, to stay on Saturday and it looks like they'll get their wish. But uh, it doesn't seem like it'll be a night game uh, for, for this one. But, yeah, definitely uh, if you're James Franklin, if you're Drew Aller, if you're Andy Kotelnicki, a new offensive coordinator working in your new system, game one, uh, you'd rather it be a noon kick. Uh, and and maybe, those, maybe those fans are a little hungover when they wake up. Maybe they're not as crazy. Maybe they need the first quarter to get back going. Uh, and, uh, and you can get into – uh, maybe a better rhythm offensively. Uh, you know, we're, we're still what we're May 29th. So a little yep. early to, to fully break that thing down. But uh, I, I think that's, uh, I, I think that's a, a thumbs up, a positive sign if you're Penn state. Yeah. I, I don't think that West Virginia fans ever really stop drinking. So I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know that they're actually going to be a lull there. I think it's just going to be, actually, they're just going to go right through the night, but Hey, that's what they do down there. Uh, it goes on at State College for big games, too. Max, uh, I said put you on the spot. I was just kidding. Yeah. I, I'm just curious uh, about your thoughts about what you, uh, what it was like um, the last couple of years for you covering James Franklin's program, the highs and lows. 2022 ended on a very high note. 2023 did not end on a very, very high note. Um, just your thoughts on what you've seen from them uh during your time. And also, as Johnny said, it's early max, but uh, you know, I think all of us kind of have a, have, you know, uh, a number in mind for maybe what they're capable of doing this year, if they can stay healthy. So how did you, how have you looked at the last couple of years uh, on James Franklin's watch? Definitely agree. We've all got a number we're, we're thinking about. Um, it's been an interesting three years, right? I mean, obviously you guys have been around for it too. I would say from a student perspective, kind of thrown into the fire right of uh reporting with this with this team because uh when we started back in 2021 you know that wasn't a great season it started out awesome and then it, it went off the rails right away so we started to see uh losing james franklin pretty early on in my college career which was a different experience from a from a journalism perspective but it's been a great learning process but I, the way that I look at it, the way that these years have gone, I mean, 2021, uh, like we said, kind of just mediocre throughout 2022, starts to look like they're turning the corner. And then last year in 2023, the whole way through, we're like, all right, well, this is pretty much what we expected. The offense is lacking. Then you say, well, they got to have another good end. And then maybe this can finally be the hump. That didn't happen, right? So I think if you look at it, this is really going to be – one of the more pivotal years in the James Franklin era at Penn State, in my opinion, because 
the playoff is now expanded. You've got a whole set of new coordinators. You've still got a ton of returning talent, but you've got expectations that you've got to start meeting. So I think that I think that this is a pretty big year for James Franklin right now, based on the past three years of what I've seen. Yeah, I mean, Max, I know you agree, like, just from what you were saying, in terms of how pivotal this year is, and Bob, we've talked about it, like, you know, no team, you know, at least based on recent history, is going to benefit more from a 12-team playoff uh, than Penn State. I believe it's five of the last seven seasons or five of the last eight seasons. You know, if this 12-team format was in place, they would have made it. Uh, and obviously, they, they've come up short. They haven't made that 14 playoff, and they never did. Uh, under James Franklin. And it was just kind of getting over that hump. Like last year, it's like, you know, okay, you basically, you know, not, not to knock Maryland or Iowa or even the West Virginia opener, but for all intents and purposes, it was a two game season. And they, they went 0 and 2 in that two game season against Ohio state uh, and against Michigan this upcoming season, you get at Ohio state at home. I don't know how much that is going to matter given what Ohio state is looking like uh, they could do this upcoming season, but Michigan off the schedule, um, you've got USC and Washington, you know, coming over from the Pac-12, and they're on the schedule, but they don't have Caleb Williams and Michael Penix Jr. at quarterback. Uh, so some tricky games on this schedule, but you know, one that I think Penn State can navigate pretty well and and get to that 12 team. I, I know Bob, I think you're on the. We talked about the nine and a half win. Uh, you know, the the betting number right now, the win total. Uh, I think I'm on the over there. I think Bob's on the under. Uh, again, not to put you on the spot, Max, but you know what? Bob does it to me all the time. Yeah, all the time. All the all time. I'm ready. That's what I'm here for. Where do you Where do you lean on that? You know, oh, he's think, going over nine and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I, am I? Am I? I don't know. When I When I first made a prediction about a month ago, I went under. I, I said Ooh. nine on the dot. Um, I'm there's. I just think there's too many concerns right now on the offensive end, and while I think the defense is still going to be really, really good. Uh, there's a few question marks, you know, yeah. the secondary depth, especially at corner, uh, there's a lot of unproven guys there. And I'm, I'm sure I know it's been talked about a ton between you two as well. So I think right now I sit at nine games. But I agree, though, the schedule is easy. It's one of the easier ones that Penn State has seen in a while. So I definitely think there's potential to go over. But I think I, I, as a baseline, I'm starting it under right at nine. Yeah, and, and I, I do think that, like, I'm, I'm leaning 10-2, and, and and really it's a schedule thing because while I do think Andy Kotelnicki is going to open things up a little bit more, I, I think he's still going to be hamstrung by the guys he has at wide receiver and the issues there that, that are well-documented, uh, not only by us, but by everyone on the beat. And uh, Julian Fleming, I think, will – it'll be nice to have him you know, in the mix and he's got that potential. I think Harrison Wallace, if he stays healthy, has that, has a true NFL potential. Oh, yeah. um, but I do think that this offense is going to be more often than not doing enough to get by, um, you know, not as bad or as, as much as an eyesore as it was last year, but I think it's still going to be, you're still going to have grinded out games, uh, you know, this upcoming season. But I think if you just look at the talent discrepancy, uh, with Penn State and, and some of the other teams on the schedule. Like, they don't get Oregon either, which I think is huge because Oregon mm -hmm. looks like it could be a, a true playoff team, like a top four playoff team uh, this upcoming season. So I just think the talent discrepancy between Penn State and the rest of the Big Ten beyond Ohio State, uh, Oregon, and Michigan, two of those teams now on the schedule, I think really bodes well for them. But, you know, it's it's still May. We're still hanging on to May <laughs> into June. So, you know, plenty more time to discuss that. Yeah. yeah. I uh, I will say this. I think the West Virginia game is going to be harder than uh, people. I think most fans realize. I think that's a team that is got some experience and talent in the right places. And I do think that at, for as openers go, I mean, I don't know that it's going to be I, the the opener two years ago at Purdue. I think I think it's a comparable opener to that one. When you talk about the environment, when you talk about the crowd, when you talk about some of the players they have coming back, if they win that game, Johnny, I could, I could see your, I could see your scenario coming together. Um, um, Cause that Purdue game was a springboard for the 2022 team. Um, I, I just think that's going to be an interesting game. And I think this schedule might be a little bit harder than actually, I know it's, I know Michigan was on the schedule last year, but some of the, some of the games they have this year, um, I think it, oh, from top to bottom, it might be actually a little bit harder than last year's only because I don't think it's going to be easy at USC because Penn State, when they see a good quarterback, they, 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 they so rarely see him in the Big Ten. It tends to not go well. And this, you know, that, that, that team 
is going to be able to throw the ball. I don't know what Wisconsin's got, got, got this year, guys, but they have to be better than they were last year. Minnesota, last time Penn State went out there, it didn't go too well for them. I just think it's – I think you could make a case they could lose three or four games. But, Johnny, I could also see them going 10-2. and two, But I do think they will be tested. And I think they're going to get tested early. And that might be really good for them. And I just want to see Drew, honestly – He's not a kid anymore. I want to see Drew, um, you know, execute early in the season. Um, he's At some point, he's going to have to win a game against a decent team in the fourth quarter. And uh, I think I think we're still waiting for that. I am not counting the Indiana win last year as a uh, big win in the fourth quarter. So we'll see. I think it's a fascinating season, one of the more fascinating seasons uh, during James's 11 years. Yeah, and and I mean, with, with me saying 10 and 2, like that's like – they slip up a game. I think they're going to be – I think Penn State will be favored in every game they have this year except for the Ohio State game. I mean, I mean, why wouldn't they? Unless, like, obviously, unless they hit a snag early and then maybe USC is playing better than expected. Uh, and by time that game rolls around, they could be an underdog on the road. But, uh, yeah, no, I do think that the, the it, it might be a classic slip-up thing. But at the same time, if you're 10-2 and two, and if you're in yeah. the Big Ten, I, I mean, you're probably getting in. You're probably – you might be one of the last teams in. Uh, to the 12 team playoff, but I think you do get in. And then, you know, maybe you go down to Tuscaloosa or you go somewhere for that first round game. Who knows? Uh, so I was having a conversation about this actually, uh, um, you know, last week with someone and we we're talking about like bowl trips. And like, I know fans like, you know, will sometimes schedule their Christmases or, you know, holiday travel yeah. <laughs> around bowl trips for Penn state games. And uh, it's just going to be a different dynamic now with this 12 team playoff, because, you're not going to really know um, until I guess I, you know, you don't know what bowl they're going to until a few weeks before anyway, but you, know, you might be, you, your, your trip might be to Tuscaloosa. It might be to, you know, Auburn or you know Tallahassee or wherever uh, for a first round game. Um, and if they lose that, you know, they don't go to a bowl game. Um, so no, just a really interesting dynamic though, going into this season, you talked about drew uh, Bob, a lot of it falls on his shoulders. A lot of it falls on the defensive shoulders as well, because we know that how many, you know, games and how many times that they've stepped up last season. Uh, even in the two games they lost, they stepped up and probably should have won those games or at least uh, came came closer from an offensive standpoint. So, uh, yeah, a lot of question marks and, and a lot to discuss, you know, really over these next few months before it all kicks off. Max and Johnny, do you guys have any uh, big thoughts on the uh, Beaver Stadium uh, upgrades, the renovation that's that's coming down the pike? I saw – I saw the photos of what it's supposed to look like. Uh, just your thoughts on what's going down there. I know you guys really enjoy Beaver Stadium as it's currently constructed, uh, completely up to date. Um, more concession stands. <laughs> more concession stands. You, how much is this going to help? Do you think? Uh, I'm just impressed you kept a straight face through most of that. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's long overdue, right? Uh, I mean, I've only been on this campus for four years, and I can say that. So. Um, it's long overdue, especially the press box. Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> no, it, it'll be great. And, and I'm glad that I think it's an important thing that they're still planning on keeping seating over 100,000 because that's been such a draw for the whole, I mean, for the whole athletic department for all these years. Um, I, I'm curious to see exactly where it ends up because obviously they're still in the early stages of this project. But renovations are overdue. Uh, you, you can see it from standing outside the stadium. Obviously, it's one of the cathedrals of college football, but it's needed It's needed an update. It needs a facelift. And so I think this is important. And I think as long as they hold on to something like the 100K plus people that Penn State fans are, are going to hold on to, I think people are going to be really happy to see a facelift. Yeah, one one thing to note too is you know you you see those pictures, those renderings of how you know beautiful you know it, it might look in the future. Renderings change, uh, oh, yeah. you know. So so if you're a fan, and you see the rendering, like don't don't hold that you know to heart. Um, but it is it is definitely needed. I mean, going back years and years, you know, it's it's funny, um, Max Bob. Like you know when I when I was working at the CDT back in I think it was 2016 2017. Uh, it became kind of running joke on the beat that whenever we got to talk to Sandy Barber, the athletic director at the time, and sure enough, Beaver Stadium always came up. And it was like my job on the beat to ask about like hosting other events, you know, hosting, you know, yeah. soccer games or hosting hockey or, or whatever. And I think, you know, these renovations and obviously the winterization of Beaver Stadium is a huge talking point when it comes to that and having that stadium 
prepared for playoff games in December and maybe even January, but uh, also to, to host other events and bring not only more revenue in for the athletic department, but bring, you know, more to, to just the community and, and to the greater state of Pennsylvania when it comes to, you know, more than just seven Saturdays a year. Uh, I want to see, you know, uh, Manchester United against Liverpool in an exhibition at Beaver Stadium. <laughs> Give it to me, please. I mean, Michigan yeah. Stadium had it, you know, I guess it might've been 10 years ago or eight years ago, or whatever it was, but like, you know, Beaver Stadium and State College, they have the hotels, they, you know, they have the infrastructure, um, potentially in place. It just has to get there from a, from a renovation standpoint. Um, and, and just, you know, obviously those seven Saturdays a year are the biggest things that you, that you need to focus on and making sure that the fan experience, uh, it remains a raucous and intimidating environment to come into, but also like, you know, it's just a better experience for the fans, the concourse, the seating, the Wi-Fi, everything, uh, needs to be, needs to be upgraded. Johnny Penn's Flyers. That's what I want to see. I want to see. I, a, you know I want to see a Penn's Flyers game. I don't care how cold it is. That's what I want to see. I'm not a huge hockey guy. It, it's like firmly you're like out. you're missing out. I, I know. No, I, I get it. Like I like li- I like hockey live. Like I had, when I was a student at Penn State, uh, the only real team I never covered was the hockey team. So I got season tickets when I was a senior and sat in the student section. Like that was awesome. I've been to a couple Flyers games. I lived in Pittsburgh. Went to a couple uh penguins games but so i get it and, and that that spectacle would be would be really cool at beaver stadium but uh i'd be lying if i w- if i wouldn't say i would prefer a, a soccer exhibition in june uh to you know to uh winter classic but i know that i know that i'm in the minority there i'm with you johnny i've been wanting to get into hockey for years and i just never do it but it's great in person i'd love to see it i personally i want to see more concerts at beaver stadium because I didn't go to the Luke Combs concert, but I was in town when it happened and I saw it. I'm not seeing many things like that. I mean, it it looks like a football Saturday and the traffic was even worse. (laughs) So they got to they got to figure that out. But I mean, they're going to bring people in if if they're doing stuff there. The Luke Combs concert was unbelievable. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Um, I I was fortunate enough to be able to go. And I mean, it was 80,000 people in there. Um, Oh, yeah. And, you know, the beer lines, you know, were, were kind of reflective of that. Um, but you know what? It was it was a great time. And if you're able to do that way more often, I mean, that was only the second concert they've ever had at Beaver Stadium. The other one was, right. Shelton, I believe, in 2017, which didn't go over as well um, as this one did. So if we're able to just expand you know, the use of this, like you said, Max, it's a cathedral of college football. It's it's one of the most historical stadiums in, in North America. And I think a lot of artists, a lot of leagues in terms of different games and different avenues of bringing different things to state college. I, th- I think there's there's a lot of different ways you can utilize Beaver Stadium and, and to the benefit of the fans, to the benefit of the people who live in state college, to the students uh, and to the people who are within driving distance, too. Max, before we uh, wrap up your inaugural uh, Blue White Breakdown podcast, uh, Chicago is my favorite city in the United States. Pittsburgh's on my list of the top five. So what it, for the Penn State fans, just your your association with Chicago, um, if you could only root for one team, would it be the Bears or the Cubs? And what do you like best about Chicago, other than everything? Um, it's the Cubs, hands down. Um, they are like, they're like my one team that I could never like as a journalist cover because I'm just such a diehard Cubs fan. Like, I feel like everybody's got to have one that you could just, you can never get near. So, uh, the Cubs are mine. I still love the bears though, of course. Um, and being born in Pittsburgh, I like, I like the Steelers too. Uh, that, that confuses a lot of people, but my favorite thing, I mean, it's Wrigley field. Like uh, <laughs> Wrigley field is just absolutely perfect, but, uh, Chicago, I mean, the beans pretty cool too. But uh, you know, it's Wrigley Field for sure. I think Bob's favorite part of Chicago is the Billy Goat Tavern. I was going to say <laughs> Wrigleyville is my favorite part of really? Chicago, but the Billy Goat also has a special uh, place. I just like the fact that you can fly direct from Harrisburg, nine yeah. minute flight, cheap. I think it's. I just think it's not that expensive of a city considering all of that it has to offer. I think it's, it's very affordable. But I mean, there's so much to see and do. They got a beach. They got maybe the best mass transit system of a major city that 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 I know of because you can literally get anywhere in that yeah. city, and you don't have it's to worry about traffic. Right? I just yeah. think it's great. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely it's probably the best in North America, uh, but 
I've been I've been places that have better. Shout out Tokyo, but um, <laughs> uh, no, I, I agree with you. And actually, it's a it's a real shame. I haven't been back to Chicago since uh, pre pandemic, so I really need to get back there soon. Maybe we just do a pen live football. We we can expense it, right? Like we can, there we go. We can talk to the higher ups, talk to the powers that be, and just send the three of us out there for a a team bonding weekend. I, I'm yeah, down. we need that. I love Wrigley. Bay. It's the media days. They they when they moved it to Indianapolis, uh, mm-hmm. it's just it, a little. I a lot of a lot of my heart uh, died a little bit because Indianapolis and Chicago. It's not really. It's not even not comparative. It's not really even a, a close comparison. And for the longest time, it was in Chicago, and that was. The, you know they would pay for it. We could, I could stay out like an extra week. It was a lot of fun. But you know what? Oh, that was Bob. That was the last time I've been to Chicago. Yeah. I remember it was actually me, Audrey Snyder, who was he was at the Athletic now, but was not at the Athletic at the time. Yeah. Uh, and Andrew Callahan, who used to work yeah. at Twenty Four Sports. The three of us, we we had a day. We went out a day early. Uh, we hit Wrigleyville all day. We sat in the bleachers. It was a beautiful night. They, I'm pretty sure they beat the Cardinals. So Max would have. That's always a good thing. It's always a good thing. It was a great day, and you know what? I like Indianapolis. It's very walkable. You like like those scooters. You like those scooters. That's the only. That's the only thing you like about Indianapolis. I love the little motorized scooters. It is very walkable, but it's also fun to just zoom around. Not after beers, but before beers. (laughs) You have to be safe. But I also just yeah. I mean, my experience is being out in Indianapolis uh, for the combine. Yeah, a little bit more fun. Uh, than Big Ten Media Days, but motion to move uh, Big Ten Media Days back to Chicago. I will sign that petition. All right. Awesome. In favor. All right, guys, anything else before we go? Any news? Anything you guys want to share with the Penn State fans? Anything coming up? Johnny, you were uh, off, off before we started this. I believe uh, sooner rather than later, you're going to have a Kotal Nicky uh, story, correct? You got kind of a, a one-on-one sit down with him, and you're looking forward to to churning that out. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, just to plug that for a second, um, you know, this was a couple months ago, I guess, at this point, early April. And I've mentioned on the podcast here before having sit down one on one interviews uh, before it was the week of Blue White. So it was with Drew Aller and Julian Fleming. Those two stories have already dropped. Go to Penn Live to read those. Um, thought they turned out well. And both guys are really honest and uh, really good with their with their time. Uh, and I was able to sit down and talk to Andy Kotelnicki, um for a really good conversation, just about his journey uh, to this point, you know, from a small town in Minnesota, going through the ranks as a player and as a coach at the D2, D3 level, working his way up uh, to this position now where he's, um, you know, one of the one of the highest paid and, and you know, highly coveted offensive coordinators uh, in the power conferences. And uh, I can't say power five anymore because it's not really a thing, but uh, no, Andy Kotelnicki, great dude. And I think he's going to do really good things for, for this program. And uh, yeah, that, that feature is set to drop. I believe we're recording this on Wednesday, May 29th. I would expect that uh, late next week. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Max, good luck with uh, the car. I, 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 do, I hope yeah. hopefully the damage was not, too significant. I know you're going to, as you get more, more and more familiar with our Pen Lives Arc system, I'm sure you'll be able to. It's it's, it's only about a 97 step process to uh, yeah to get a story up. But once you get comfortable with that, I'm sure you'll be turning out uh, some stories. If you're not off, the summer's going to fly fly by, guys. And I am holding everyone to their early Penn State picks. Johnny, 11, 12 and 0. I think it was 12 and 0 or it's 11 and 1. Max, Max is at 9. I'm at like 9 right now too. I'm holding everyone accountable. Johnny, you have them as national champions, 12 and 0, and then they're going to win. They're going to get a bye, and then they're going to win a couple playoff games. It's going to be a dream season. Is that accurate? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We're going to be having conversations like, you know, could this Penn State team beat the Cleveland Browns or, you know, beat the Jackson? Yeah, we're going to be having those conversations, of course, in January. No, yeah. no. I, I do think that they make the playoff. I'm saying this now in May. I love it. Object to change, injuries, transfers, whatever. Um, I do think they make the 12 team playoff. I love it. All right, guys. Max, welcome to Penn Live. Welcome to the. Blue White Breakdown Podcast. Welcome to being put on the spot when you least expect it on a weekly basis. Jo- I know Johnny enjoys it. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it as well. Yeah, this is this is where I thrive. I'm I'm built for this, so I'm ready. <laughs>